Welcome back to America Right Now. So is TikTok brain affecting your kids? Some studies say yes, according to the Very Well Health article. Brian, br uh, brain scans of students who used the app regularly revealed addiction-like responses, and some research subjects lacked enough self-control to stop watching. Parents and educators have seen a decline in kids' attention spans and a clear lack of focus due to excessive screen time. But what can be done to sort of solve the problem of TikTok brain? Joining us now to discuss this troubling phenomenon is America's psychologist, Dr. Jeffrey Gardier. Dr. Jeff, good to see you. Great to join you, Tom. So we're learning more about this now, and the studies on, the studies on this are limited, but the research is showing that the app is having a negative, negative impact on brain development in young people. What could some of the long-term uh, effects here, and how do you know whether or not your kid you know, is, is, is suffering from TikTok brain? Yeah, so some of the things that they're starting to see, Tom, uh, it's not just TikTok, but social media in general, and the fact that there are these videos that are personalized uh, and uh, follow the algorithms uh, that uh, give a preference to what it is that these youngsters want to see. So the reason that they know that there is an effect uh, is simply because uh, the attention span of these kids, as you talked about, is getting much, much shorter. Uh, if you try to take the devices away from them, or try to uh, turn off some of the social media, uh, then we'll see uh, that these kids are actually having some real issues, getting very angry, getting very upset, and the delay of impulse control. And if you want to know whether a child has it or not, uh, Tom, mm -hmm. is having some issues, try ripping that uh, device away <laughs> and see what happens. Yeah, I, we've heard about it causing Tourette's. Um, there are concerns about ADHD sleeplessness, uh, but there have also been studies linking social media to skyrocketing depression rates in kids. What are your thoughts on that? Well, what we're starting to see, of course, uh, some of the studies, and as you correctly pointed out, Tom, uh, that these are long-term studies, so we need to know much, much more. But what they're showing is that many times kids base a lot of their self-perceptions, a lot of their self-esteem on a lot of the social media. Social media can be a good thing if it's about connecting, but when your whole life is about that and you're not getting a good diet of things to work with or to study or to spend time with, mm -hmm. and it's just that social media, then that can be a real issue. So we've seen issues such as uh, eating disorders, self-esteem disorders, and some issues around dysphoria, starting to see some issues around uh, excessive sadness. Yeah, I mean, look, from my perspective, any, any app uh, that is, is run and controlled and manipulated by communist China, that should be a, that should be a set off alarm bells for parents and grandparents and folks who were taking care of kids. Um, but there's also been discussion about how it really impacts intellectual attainment because the app seems to reward the more outrageous videos here in the U.S., while we've heard that the algorithm in China rewards more intellectual videos. Talk about how the brain itself reacts to certain components of social media. Well, what we're seeing is that there's a neurotransmitter that's called dopamine. So when you get something that really pulls your attention, and sometimes it's not always the academics, but more around entertainment, then the brain fires off this dopamine and that says, ooh, that's good. Let me see that again. Or, ooh, that's good. Let's do that again. And that's why it's really important for parents to make sure that their kids are getting more than just what they're seeing on social media, that they're getting more books, that they're getting more academics. And of course, it's also important that they have less screen time. As a matter of fact, TikTok has something called a screen time management tool, uh, mm. because what they're what they're doing is allowing parents to cap the amount of time that their kids have on TikTok. So even they know something is going on with social media. All right. So in addition to screen time management tools, just real quick, what else can parents and, and, and grandparents do to prevent their kids from suffering the impacts of social media platforms like this? 
Well, let's get them out of the virtual world, Tom, and into the real world. And now that, uh, you know, we have more in-person interactions, uh, it's important that we get our kids out there. Instead of playing games on the screen all the time, get them uh, to play games out in the field, more sports, uh, and making sure that we limit that screen time, but more interaction, more social interactions. And those are the things that will make our children as healthy as they need to be emotionally, academically. All right. A, a lot of common sense coming out of Dr. Jeffrey Gardier, America's psychologist. We're going to I'm sure we're going to talk more about this, doctor. Really important topic. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Tom. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.